Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I haven't recorded a video just one day yesterday on Sunday and I've already missed you guys. I know you don't believe me, but I really mean it. So, I have some news for you today and I'm gonna give you in a second. But those of you who are aware, today on April 8th we have the solar eclipse. So I am wishing all of us to have to experience the solar eclipse on the good side because it's a powerful, powerful eclipse. Those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So, the first topic of today, I have something that is uh, was brought to my attention by a Polish soldier who has a YouTube channel and his name is Piotr Pawełka. And this is about the defense of the fatherland, Article 618, that comes from the Homeland Defense Act and legal status of this act, which is from today. So this is very, very fresh as far as updated. And I'm going to read you what is this about, because as he explained, even those people who will not be going physically to the army, who will not be called, conscript, they will still have to participate in this experience. And what kind of participation is this? Well, imposition of the obligation to provide personal benefits. So let's go through this, everyone. I will try not to shake this phone too much while I'm walking to the spot. So, in a nutshell, before we go into details, those people who will not be going directly to the army will still have to stay in this country and contribute to the W experience. You know what I'm talking about? W, A, R? That's right. Number one, persons with Polish citizenship who are at least 16 years of age and under 60 years of age might be required to provide personal benefits consisting in performing various types of ad hoc work to prepare for the defense of the state, Polonia, or to combat natural disaster, eliminate their effects and manage crisis. Hmm. Number two. The obligation to provide personal services might also include the obligation to use simple tools and in relation to persons performing services consisting in the delivery of documents of conscription to military service and summons to perform services hereinafter, referred to as couriers, also the means of transport own. So here I want to tell you guys uh, about the video that I have recorded quite a while ago in which I was telling you about an agreement, a contract that Polish Post Service has signed, not sure if I think it was, yes, with the Ministry of Defense of Poland. I think it was 2000, was it 22? No, it was 20, 23, I think, last year massive massive contract i have to find this video and put down below in the description box so you can watch it and what its contract was saying that post office polish post office was buying certain machines to um, big spending on it to make sure that the letters you know what kind of letters would be delivered efficiently to everyone who's supposed to receive them so, you know, those couriers might be a very important, very important thing to have while you have so many letters to deliver, just to make sure that those couriers have their own transportation. The third point, the obligation to provide personal benefits might, Im might be imposed in connection with military exercises as well as for the purpose of, let me pass the people, for the purpose of providing and handling items 
of benefits in kind. Number four, with respect to couriers, the obligation to provide personal services might be imposed in order to, what is it? In order to check the mobilization readiness of the armed forces and in the case of coming up reserve soldiers in the middle mode of summoning soldiers of the territorial defense forces to report for territorial military service on a rotational basis. Okay, here I want to tell you in a nutshell what this is really about, like in simple words. If you are not a soldier, you will be still helping soldiers. If they need your car, you will give your car. Yeah, well, you will. They will take your car. If they need some other objects that are important, they will take those objects from you without a shadow of a doubt. Because as this article, what is the number? 618 says. And by, by the way, the Homeland Defense Act was signed, I think it was in May 2022, not a single MP. Polish MP in Polish Parliament, same, voted against it. Majority was for it. And there were some who, you know, stay in the toilet, bathroom, restroom, right? Kind of didn't show up during the voting moment. How convenient. So that's how this looks like, everyone. Of course, who is excluded? I have to record another video about who is excluded from this because MPs definitely are. If you're part of Polish parliament, you're good. As you know, yesterday, well, not, not really yesterday, this was on Friday. I written this down on yesterday from the New Arab. This is also another article you will have down below this video. Iran tells United States to step aside as it prepares to attack Israel. So, as you know, Iran has warned the United States not to get involved in its anticipated reprisal attack on Israel after Tel Aviv allegedly killed senior Iran commanders in Syria. And Iran warned the United States not to get involved. So guys, where do you think the bleep will hit the fan first? Do you think, I think that that region, again, I'm not an expert. That's why I'm bringing those experts for the live streams to ask them those questions. And this week will be pretty busy with this because I might have at least two, if not three lives, live streams with the guests. So keep an eye on it. This topic is definitely the topic to address because it looks very serious. On post on X on Friday, the Iranian president's deputy chief of, chief of staff for political affairs told the United States to step aside so you won't get hit and warned Washington not fall into Prime Minister Netanyahu's trap. Evil trap, devil's trap. My, my commentary, of course. Well, we kind of agree here on this, don't we? Yashmidi said, says the United States responded by asking Iran not to target American facilities. Iran pledged to punish Israel at the funeral for the seven officers killed on Friday. State television showed demonstrators carrying pictures of those killed and banners with slogans such as dead to Israel and dead to America. The US is reportedly on high alert and is preparing for a possible attack by Iran targeting Israeli or Armenian assets in the region. Here I would like to ask my American viewers, which is plenty of you, lots and lots of you, and I love you guys, by the way, please leave the comments down below. How is the, how is the approach to this in the United States? How does it look like? How do you feel? Here I have an article from TASS about EU to be affected by confiscation of Russian assets. This article uh, addresses an opinion of one of the experts who is a professor of economy and law of 
HEC Paris Armin Steinbach, it's his name, he said that the confiscation would prompt investors to tor turn away from the United, uh, European Union because of its failure to observe property rights. So this is from April 7th, Paris. Europe will be affected by the confiscation of Russian assets, but it does not concern the US much. Professor of Economy and Law of HEC Paris, Armin Steinbach, I think you say, told Le Figaro newspaper, second, let me flip the page, while the US has little interest at stake, then it will be the short, the shot in the foot for the European Union, the expert said. Moscow would resort in its turn to such a measures that would cover the European countries in the first instance. Steinbach noted, Russia's steps, oh, good place to sit down. Russia's steps in response to such a confiscation would be mainly directed against Europe, at least 200 billion euros of Russian assets are in the EU. This sum is much higher than Russian funds kept in the United States, he wrote. See, I didn't know that. Huh. EU has more of Russian assets than US. Okay, furthermore, the confiscation of Russian assets would prompt investors to turn away from the EU because of its failure to observe property rights. This, by the way, is not much of concern for such a dominating economic power as the United States, Steinbach said. The European Commission approved earlier the proposal to the revenues from frozen Russian funds to help Kiev. First allocation can be made as early as in July this year. You remember Ursula the Witch when she was talking about it? Like rapido, rapido, July, right? So guys, what we have now, April, time is flying. We see, we see. And now I have a very interesting article about how Poland is ready for... Let me find it. Sorry, today I'm really chilled because the weather is like that. Uh, charges. Charges for electric cars mandatory. The new EU rules enter into force. Poland is facing a major challenge. I saw the title and I said to myself, let's bring it to my audience and let me read you. On April 13th, the EU's AFIR, A -F -I -R, regulations, which concerns the development of alternative fuels infrastructure, enter into force. According, so still not yet, but very soon, according to them, each EU country is obliged to build a network of fast charging stations for electric vehicles and hydrogen refueling stations along the main transport corridors. For Poland, this means a gigantic challenge and high fines at the stake. Charges for electric cars mandatory. In accordance with the decisions of the European Parliament of October 2022, new AFIR, I'm sorry if I mispronounce, AFIR, regulations on the development of alternative fuels infrastructure will enter into force. The regulation provides, for example, the construction of fast charging stations for passengers, cars and trucks, as well as hydrogen refueling stations along the EU's most important transport corridors. What's more, according to the regulations, already in 2025, on the most important European roads, the so-called Trans-European Transport Network TEN-T, Charges with a capacity of at least 400 kilowatts are to be installed every 60 kilometers. Today, there are practically no such charges in Poland. Yep, you do not have to be an expert in electromobility to understand that for Polish, it means a gigantic challenge. In fact, the Af AFIR regulations forces us to increase the total capacity of electric car charging points in our country, Poland. 
by almost half. In addition, two years are available for the implementation of this postulate. With the current pace of network construction in our country, in Poland, this task might be simply this task might simply turn out to be unrealistic. According to the electromobilizing uh, counter, in 2023 the number of the fast charges in Poland increased by 28%, while in the first two months of 2024 only 16% more charging points were installed than at the same time a year ago. If Poland fails to meet the EU-imposed targets, boom, 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 threat, 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 by the deadline, it will face high financial penalties. They didn't say how much. I should look it up how much. Because we have many penalties, right? Penalties, penalties, from every angle, penalties. Experts emphasize that taking into account the extensive plans for electromobility, there will be still a shortage of, shortage of charges in Poland. At the end of 2023, there were only 5,933 publicly available points in Poland. At the same time, they were 93,348 plug-in cars on our roads. One more time. Almost 6,000 charging points. How many cars? 93,348. About half of them are electric cars, the rest are plug-in hybrids. And although the number of battery cars in Poland has been growing slowly in recent years, the development of the fast charger network has definitely not kept up with it. The best, this best illustrates the challenge that Poland is facing. Yes, so this is the vision of European Union and Ursula de Witch. Under the sea, under the sea. Two comments of the day, everyone. Sorry if I'm shaking too much today with this phone, but I hope you're still with me. One comment is from Alexander Ross uh, from my latest solo video in which I was talking. I started this video talking about Sikorsky's visit in Brussels and the new mission, NATO mission project. At 12.29, you ask how these people sleep at night. A fair question if you assume that Stoltenberg is a normal person, but nobody can rise to that rank in NATO without already having had their conscience surgically removed years ago. Actually, Alexander, I agree with you 100%. I just leave it there. I know exactly what you're talking about. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, you know, reptiles are reptiles, right? And the second comment is from Medusa Slayer. The Guardian published a huge article in, 2015, in, sorry, in 2015 about Ukraine being the most corrupt country in Europe. It's been known forever. Same as with their military being Nazis. But the US controlled media changed the narrative when the United States launched their proxy war, of course. Thank you so much for your comments. Uh, I read all of your comments, guys. I repeat this over and over again because you might not believe me, but I do because I'm learning a lot also from your comments, a lot. So with this being said, <coughs> excuse me, all the links to the articles that I read you are down below in the description box. Uh, I want to say that this week, like I said, I might have three live streams. I will have back Professor Michael Hudson. Actually, actually, I wouldn't say by his request, but in a way, because when we ended our live stream, he mentioned that there are very important things that he wants to say uh, about Israel and that region of the world and his knowledge about the situation. So definitely he's coming back this week. On Tuesday, I have the one and only, long time no see, Andrei Martianov, who is one of my favorite guests, as you know. And perhaps this week we will also have Scott Ritter to address more military topics as well. So keep an eye on it. This might be a pretty busy week with the live streams. And with this, guys, being said, I want to thank everyone who is supporting me, who hits this like, 
who leaves the comments down below, uh, everyone who donated to my fundraiser, because this is very, very, very big thing for me and I'm very grateful for your donations. Uh, you have my mailing list as well. You have my Instagram. My dream is to hit 10,000 followers before the end of this, this year. So if you have Instagram, please follow me there. You will see some nice pictures of beautiful places in the world. And what else? PayPal is there as well. Mm. And locals, of course, I almost forgot. My locals community, uh, where you can also join me. And you can do it for free, but if you want to support me, very, very greatly appreciate it. With all of this, guys, have a wonderful week. I will see you tomorrow with Mr. Martianov and maybe in the solo video, depending what shenanigans will be taking place from this moment on until mañana. Lots of love. And remember, we are the leading edge and we are saving humanity. Bye, everyone.